hello and welcome to this review of one of the most infamous pieces of diabolical dog shit ever made, the IBM PC Junior keyboard. Last week I reviewed a Texas Instruments board from the same era. That keyboard was pretty shit and the computer itself didn't do well at all. But the PC Junior is on quite a different level of fail altogether and this was in a significant part due to the extremely poor quality of the keyboard it came with. Let me bring you back in time a little bit to a very interesting period in computing history. The year is 1983. IBM had been so successful selling the personal computer for the last two years that they had a bigger market share than everyone else put together twice. The personal computer caught on so well that IBM became basically synonymous with the term computer and their domination of the market was undisputed. Other companies like Texas Instruments and Commodore could only keep themselves from going under by targeting the cheap home computer market as the IBM PC was prohibitively expensive for use at home. The other companies practically killed themselves off in a bid to bring out the lowest priced home computers while IBM had no trouble shifting massive amounts of machines priced at business level. Then, in November of 1983, IBM announced that they were going to target the home market as well with the PC Junior, then codenamed the Peanut. This resulted in a massive panic as everyone thought that IBM's status alone would be enough to assure the success of the PC Junior to such an extent that all competitors would be utterly wiped out, granting IBM a virtual monopoly. However, when the PC Junior did hit the market, consumers immediately found that the computer was shit overpriced and not as compatible with the PC as they had expected. Finally, it came with a chiclet keyboard that was so bad that reviewers actually refused to acknowledge it even existed. It was later replaced with a more conventional looking keyboard, but it was still pretty crap and the damage had been done. The PC Junior still ranks as one of the worst flops in history, up there with new coke. This is the original chiclet model, named after the brand of chewing gums which the keycaps resemble. It was kindly donated by one of my viewers, and I'm going to walk you through why it was so unbelievably shunned. The keyboard had a few new features for the time, but none of them were well received. It was wireless, for example, using two infrared lights here and here, which would blink in a certain pattern to signal the computer the letters. This one even still works, see, you can see the lights flashing. Normally you wouldn't be able to see this of course because it's infrared, but my camera doesn't have an infrared filter on it, so it does show it. By the way, you can use the same trick to see if your remote control is still working. See? Anyway, it was advertised in such a way that people thought they could use it away from the computer, perhaps on the couch or on the bed, but you had to have a direct line of sight with the detector, so that wasn't actually possible. It does have a cable port here for increased reliability, or if you don't want to use batteries. The keyboard is quite small and only featured 62 keys, compared to the 83 on the PC keyboard, which is this one, which I reviewed a while ago. The rest of the keys could be accessed using this FN key, and the extra keys are noted on this plastic thing here. I'm not sure, but I think this might be the first keyboard to ever feature an FN key. Similarly, it might be responsible for the big ass Enter, which was popularized by the AT Model F, which came out later that year. You could slide other plastic templates over the top of the keyboards for use with other programs, but it never lived long enough for that to become popular. One of the problems with this template system is that the letters aren't actually on top of the keycaps themselves, especially with the FN and ALT shortcuts listed below the keycaps as well. And furthermore, the white on grey lettering isn't very clear, so it's hard to see, even more so because the keys are tall enough that they obstruct the view if you look at it from an angle. Look at this blank mess. The keyboard is small, thin and light, supposedly for portability's sake, which we just established didn't work, and frankly it cuts a poor figure compared to the titanic build quality of the upmarket PC keyboard. To clarify, even with four AA batteries in it, which go in this little compartment here by the way, this is just a 700 gram piece of plastic, while the Model F was a 2.6 kilo steel behemoth. Just to clarify, that's the weight of three Apple MacBooks. It has tiny flip out feet, which have absolutely no purchase on any desk surface that isn't made out of unpolished granite and it rattles horribly and it flexes quite a lot 
and it just feels like it was made out of used condoms or something. The biggest flaw, though, was the switches. These chiclet keys used rubber domes of an especially awful variety. They're really mushy, and Corey Sandler described the typing feel as massaging a fruitcake, which I think is a merciful understatement. The thing is, when you're just trying it out, pressing random buttons, it feels bad. You know, quite unpleasant, but not computer-floppingly awful. It's when you genuinely try to type on it that you discover just how bad it is. The thing is, the keys are fairly stiff, which is not good for rubber domes, and moreover, they bind quite badly. Only the enter key and spacebar are stabilized. None of the other large keys, like the shifts and the control, the tab, and even the backspace are stabilized. They just kind of float around. But to be honest, even just the normal small keys bind terribly on anything but dead center key presses, which <laughs> makes even attempting to type on this feel futile. I never had a PC Junior, so I couldn't tell you anything about how the computer itself was, but I'd say this keyboard is more than enough to make any computer flop, really. The typing feels especially unforgivable when you compare it to that of its bigger brother. The Model F has one of the best typing feels of any keyboard I've used to date, and considering how many of these videos I've done so far, by now that's saying something. Compared to this, the typing feel of the PC Junior is virtually a criminal offence. It's almost like IBM wanted to keep the premium goods for their upmarket PCs. I simply can't believe that the same company that made this also released this. Overall, this keyboard is easily one of the worst I've ever tried, with, from what I can tell, no redeeming qualities of any kind. I can only guess what IBM were thinking when they released this, but frankly, it got what it deserved. In the quiet words of the Virgin Mary, fuck this shit. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.